Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video and another handheld radio review. Now in this video we'll take a look at a radio called the iRadio UV83. Now I've seen two other iterations of this radio called the Radtel RT830 and the AnyTalk UV83, all linked to one specific piece of software for programming. Now the box contains the usual suspects of accessories such as the user's manual, a rechargeable battery, lanyard and belt clip, and of course the radio itself. By all accounts, it's a pretty sturdy looking radio, but it does have one major flaw, which I just can't get my head around. Now, more about this shortly. Battery capacity doesn't appear to be written on the battery serial sticker, but the sales information says it's 6800 milliamp hour. Now, if you believe that, then you probably think the Earth's flat too. Now nothing out of the ordinary with the front of this radio with the speaker and the mic on the top half and an LCD in the middle and then the lower half hosts the numeric keypad and menu buttons. Popular functions are easily accessible without going into the menu just by holding down the appropriate button. Now each button is labelled with some blue text to give you a hint at what that function does. The left side of the radio has a PTT and two programmable function buttons. Now over on the right side, we find a little rubber flap, which exposes two holes. Now these are for a Kenwood style speaker mic, which can also be used to program the radio with an appropriate programming cable. Now below this, we surprisingly find another small rubber flap, and this exposes a USB-C socket. Now I wish this was used for programming, but it's for charging the battery. While it's actually a good feature, being able to charge the battery without the desktop charger, it's just a shame that they don't add programming support to these USB-C ports. It would save so much time having to dig out another cable. Now if we turn on the radio, we see a regular looking LCD. But what I do like is the extra information down on the bottom line of the display. You might have also noticed the DW indicator at the top right next to the battery symbol. So while this radio doesn't allow listening to two frequencies at the same time, it does have dual watch. So it will still adjust to the active VFO with this selected VFO being priority. Now going through the menu, it's clear the display is dot matrix, so it supports any kind of character or images, which makes me wonder why this radio has a major flaw. Now let's discuss what I mean by that major flaw. So as we scroll through the memories, the display shows a CH with a number, which represents a channel number. If we quickly switch to the programming software where we program the memories, we can clearly see there is absolutely no way to rename the channels. So if you wanted to program in local ham radio repeaters or favorite airband frequencies with memory names so you know what they are, well, it's just not possible. Now for me, this is pretty much a deal breaker but I'm almost certain that adding this ability to assign custom names to a channel would be possible with a firmware update. Unless, of course, the firmware storage space has already been maxed out, but who knows? The software would also not let me save a memory with a CTCSS set to none, so it appears that you're forced to use CTCSS on every memory channel. This is M0 DQW, Mike Zero, Delta Quebec Whiskey, testing the audio on the iRadio UV83. Testing the audio on the iRadio UV83. This is M0 DQW, over. Now if we take a look at the RF output power with a fully charged battery, we see an output of around 4 watts on the 2 meter handband at 145.5 megahertz. If we then jump up to the 70 centimeter band, we see an RF output of around three and a half watts. Now, even though this radio will transmit on the 1.25 meter band at around 220 megahertz, the output power is only around 270 milliwatts. Now, this suggests to me that this radio is not designed to transmit here, and you could potentially damage the radio in doing so. If we take a look at the spurious signals, we can clearly see that on the two meter band, the second harmonic is not too bad at around 55 dB down from that fundamental. While up on the 70 centimeter band, it's not so good, with the second harmonic only being 33 dB down from that fundamental. Now one of the features that I was hoping to be good 
was Airband, but unfortunately Airband reception is rubbish. Like other models we've seen, the Airband demodulation sounds awful, and it's nothing but muffled and crunched audio, so it's not really worth me showing it to you. So there we go guys, the iRadio UV83, or whatever iteration you decide to call it. Now this could have been a good radio, but with the lack of memory naming, airband audio quality and 70cm of output being borderline dirty, I wouldn't recommend this radio unless you're given it as a doorstop. Until the next video guys, take care, stay safe and thanks for watching. See you in the next one.